This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. Good afternoon, this is Resource Centre on Enterprise and I'm Lim Soon Heng. Malaysia is a country of cars, but also of motorbikes. According to stats from the Malaysian Automotive Association, passengers, passenger cars registered through June this year came at nearly 276,000. But listen to this one. Number of motorbikes through May, one month less, came to nearly 267,000. So it's only about less than, uh, less than 10,000. Yep. Yeah? My guests today are Raymond Poir, who is the owner of Easy One Bikers, and Alvin Lai, the general man manager of the same company. This is a story about family-owned business that is transforming because of the changing dynamics between sellers and buyers. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Sonia. <laughs> Thanks for having now, us here. Now, first, I'm, more in, I'm very interested in how this family business is transforming. How old is this family business? Yeah, this family is been over thirty over years. Thirty, and it belongs to your your father, uh, your your grandfather. My grandfather you? starting. Wow, <laughs> and then starting is from my grandfather doing servicing because he saw the motorcycle be main part of the transportation. Uh -huh. That's why I asked my uncle and my father to learn how to servicing, how to repairing motorbike. So that's why they starting like that. The business yeah but how did a business that is about servicing motorbikes grow i mean you have to sell something beyond yeah. beyond servicing it you have to sell motorbikes so how did you get all the brands to come in how what, mm -hmm. what were the steps mm -hmm. um. well basically um whenever we are in the motorcycle uh, a business uh, whenever we start to sell one brand the other brands will come and follow suit. Ah. All right. So let's say we do one uh, uh, very well, one particular brand, and we keep on selling, selling. Other manufacturers will come and approach us and say, "Hey, would you want to push our brand as well?" So you don't become the sole distributor of any one brand. Nope. You are not exclusive to anyone. That's right. Okay. Yep. Then so so getting the brands to come on on board, you must also have customers, right? Correct. Now my understanding of traditional businesses, like the, the kind of history of yours is that you 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 open a store mm -hmm. and you just wait for people to come yes. was that how it was yeah from my grandfather's side until my father's side also open up one showroom and then keep waiting for the customer and then just uh, maybe customer refer to customer because of the good view and then you we provide good services and then they were recommend that's all the marketing so so it was based on word of mouth yeah, one person mouth, coming yeah. in yep, seeing right. it having mm -hmm. the experience and telling somebody mm -hmm. that. yeah so how fast could a business like that grow uh it's over for my uh my father plan is over 30 over million can wow. do whatever, uh, in a year so so uh, you, you said like your business is 30 years old yeah. and you got up to 30 million. so how long before you hit the 30 million mark it's take over 20 over wow. years to okay. hit that wow. okay uh-huh and and so, so in in the in the course of doing so it was all based on selling motorbikes servicing motorbikes yeah. selling motorbikes okay yeah. now you are changing your business yeah. so why why is that why is that because uh i take care of the part of the business mm -hmm. okay all the business i'm facing one problem 30 million when i hit it i want to going more uh -huh. i'm facing how to go from the management side from the marketing side or everything become headed already uh -huh. so if i understand you correctly you are going through the same kinds of issues that many smes go through a business that is started by the the patriarch the family mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. The younger generations coming in and trying to kind of do something more yeah. evolve it yep. yeah. but then you are facing some resistance yeah yeah <laughs> what if kind of resistance like we i try to hire a manager but my father not certain him uh. trust him he touches me only <laughs> that's why <laughs> the authority cannot pass down <laughs> oh so the, the trust didn't flow yeah. so how do you, so what do you have to do to kind of change that uh, for family side, because it's very hard to communicate we, we, when this generation and the older generation <laughs> want to communicate to, uh, want to make him agree. That's why I quit from the my father company. Uh -huh. I created my own company, this Easy One Bikers. Uh -huh. And then I started hire general manager, financial director. That's why I give all the authorized power authority. to them, authority uh -huh. to them. I trust them. They can do it. 
Hmm. I mean, obviously, quite interesting thing that is happening. You're going to say something. Yeah. Um. In fact, uh, when when Raymond approaches us, uh. um, you know, I I I know him as a as a motorcycle king. You know, huh. you know, being in his prime time, you know, he can really sell bikes in his days, heydays. Um. And and when he approaches and he said, um, look, Elvin, we have something different here. I want to create a brand, you know, for this motorcycle industry that will revolutionize the whole motorcycle industry in Malaysia. Uh, would you care to join us on board? So I said, think of it, a Chinaman, <laughs> a motorcycle business, a new business model, why not? You know, all the while I've been doing pioneering work and I think this is a very good project, you know, for us to kickstart. Uh-huh. That's why we created the Easy One Bikers brand. So, so you, based on, on what I'm hearing too, is that you have a way of letting go, which you think your father couldn't let go. Yeah, <laughs> yes. It's- so where did this trust come from? Where did you learn this? Uh, I learned this. I passed down my family business a year. I went to China. Ah. Okay, I learned a lot from my China businessmen. They done few billion a year. I asked them why you do it very easy and very relaxing <laughs> everything. <laughs> I say, he said, look at me. I just trust my people and then hire the professional to do it. That's why I learned from him a lot. So the, the businessman that you met in China was also, you know, he started as a family business also. Yeah. Uh-huh. But he was able to kind of let go of the control and hired yeah. professionals to do it. But he's more easy to me because he created the business on self. Uh-huh. Myself, I, say, I come back to Malaysia, I, figured I need to start my business on self also. Myself also, that's why I can give all these things to my team. Uh-huh. But how did your family feel about your, uh, you know, your going out on your own and even though doing the same kind of business, but you are doing it your own way? How, how do they respond to you? How they respond uh, uh, to me? Yeah, how do, how, do they f- how do they feel about what you're doing? What do they think? Uh, who's thinking? Your, your, f- your parents, uh, your uh, father. My parents yeah. parent starting is quite why you don't want to come back to us? Uh-huh. And then he thinking, I say, hey, uh, you give me some time, <laughs> I will prove to you uh-huh. what I'm doing. That's why in, until now, my parents agree with that. Uh, uh, now they are agreeing with what you're yeah. doing. Uh-huh. <laughs> they, I think they now giving a lot of support to me also. Great. Now. So are they going to start following what you're yeah. doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I see some changing in his company already. Now, how many outlets does your father have? Uh, four. Four outlets. Yeah. And you have how many outlets now? Now, coming soon, uh, we will be all four also. Wow, wow, wow. Quite okay. an <laughs> improvement. Yep. So uh, I think we were also expecting more uh, branches, outlets to be open as well in the next uh, years to come. Uh, given with our new business uh, expansion model plan, uh, where we are able to invite new entrepreneurs, okay, to become uh, what we call motopreneur, a combination <laughs> word of motorcycle <laughs> and entrepreneur. Yeah, you're coining your own words. Yes, also. that's right. Well, I want to kind of hear more about what you are transforming into and what are the steps that you are taking mm-hmm. so that you can get there. Okay. I'm talking to uh, Elvin Lai and uh, Raymond Poir from Easy One Bikers. This is Resource Center on Enterprise. And coming up, we will be talking about how they are, the steps that they are taking to get where they want to go. This is Resource Center, Resource Center on Enterprise, and I'm Lim Sun Hing, BFM 89.9, The Business Station. Bulletins for Managers, BFM 89.9. You are tuned to Resource Center on Enterprise, and I'm Lim Sun Heng talking to Raymond Poor and Elvin Lai, both from Easy One Bikers. We've been looking at the traditional business of selling motorbikes and how this is transforming because today's different dynamics between buyers and sellers. Now, Elvin, yep. what exactly has changed most in this business? Well, um, we, we, we change a lot from a traditional right now to the current model, uh, whereby we engage a lot on uh, online digital marketing. Uh, particularly why? Because we're targeting to the new generation, which is the Generation Y and the Millennium. And uh, to test this um, you know, theory, whether we are doing it right or wrong, um, if you notice, most of the motorcycle outlets, showrooms, usually they are facing main roads where sure. they are busy uh-huh. with cars and people. However, for our first prototype, our HQ in Ampang, uh, we did that at the outskirts of Ampang. 
uh-huh. where it's it's not even why facing. is that why is that just to test our theory on online digital marketing okay so you're going to take it off main street and to, and to and to tap into your online site Correct. so that you, to draw in the the, the, uh, the potential customers that's right how did that how is that working out it worked very well we have customer as far as from Trunganu came and buy bikes from us from Pahang uh, you know, even from none of them mostly came from Ampang. They came as far as from Puchong, you know, just to look for a showroom to buy the bikes from us. What is changing amongst these new buyers? What, how are they different? Okay, nowadays um, for young buyers, whenever they want to buy new things, okay, usually what they do is they will go online and Google something. For example, if you want to find out about iPhone 5, they will go and Google iPhone 5. Likewise, same thing here. If they want to buy their dream bike, they will go Google and they will Google the bike model. So what we did is we did our, in terms of digital marketing is that when they Google, we will always appear on the first page of Google. Mm. So do you buy uh, advertising space also? Uh, well, we engage the professional uh-huh. to help us to do our website uh-huh. and all that. So it comes with the, uh, you know, search engine optimization and all that. Keywords. Okay, you have a, a strategy, yes, online strategy. That's right. Now, w- beyond doing this online strategy, mm-hmm. what else is transforming within your business so mm-hmm. that you can meet this new group of people? Mm-hmm. Like you say, the, the Gen Y and yeah. the, the, the millennials. Uh, how are they different in terms of, you know, the buying? Mm-hmm. Uh, or while you say they go online, mm-hmm. how else are they different? Well, for once, they need more information. Mm. Okay, so we do provide information uh, uh, for them, for them to digest. Because uh, I think nowadays this uh, 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 buying behavior of these young people is that they need more information for them to make decision before they can buy a thing, or a product. So we, we do that, and we did something differently. Is that uh, in Easy on Bikers we do not sell motorcycle, hmm. but we sell motorcycle experience to you. What does that mean? What is selling an experience to what me? What means this for experience nowadays? Last time, motorcycle is one of the transportation only. Right. But now, I want to make this motorcycle become the lifestyle. The experience, how they can enjoy with the bike and they get the fun. Uh-huh. So what do we do? We do it like a huge group of convoy, two, three hundred bikers together joining and then maybe go to PD or what. And then we having uh, experience like we book whole cinema uh-huh. and then do the movie day, enjoy the movie together all the riders and booking the whole bowling center and then play bowling bowling competition so in other words you are actually working with communities you're g- yeah. creating communities Correct. so that th- there is a, a kind value. of a bond yes that's ah. right that's right so so basically through this motorcycle experience right from the moment they walk to our showroom our salesperson are trained to walk with them okay to their preferred model until they own the bike and not it doesn't just stop there Okay, we continue, you know, to create events, you know, with, uh, 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 you know, with values, you know, so that they can also experience within the community. From, from that perspective, you have to keep a database of all the people that you have come into touch with. Yes, that's right. Okay. We also deploy a CRM system for us to keep in touch with all these bikers here. How big is your database? Uh, a few thousand. Wow. Wow. Getting four, five thousand. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you, you organize these kind of trips for mm-hmm. them, and usually we say like two, three hundred people going. Yeah. So, do you have what kind of protection do you provide for them on the road? Like, you know, is yeah. there is there like police yes. guard ahead? And yes. like? uh, firstly, we usually engage the uh, safety marshals. Okay, they are trained. Uh, at, at the same time, we also engage the uh, our PDRM uh, in terms of police traffic and we get the official letter from them to allow us to go for convoy. So when you do all these different activities, mm-hmm. how how often do you get repeat customers? I mean, in other words, somebody will go on with you to the movies, will also go with you to uh, like a ride to Port Dixon. Uh, well, um, in fact, this has become one of the attraction for us at EZ1 that um, even though these bikers, they do not buy bikes from us, but when they brought friends along, you know, at who haven't owned a bike here, they say, why don't you just buy here? You know, you can immediately join all the activities that they organize here. Hmm. So we, even, even, yeah. even without buying a bike, they can participate in your activities? Yes, yes, we're okay. open to it. Okay. Now, how has that changed what you do, uh, Mr. Poir? You know, you, when you were, you were from according to Elvin, when you were with your father's company and, you know, in the family business, you were like a top salesman. You really know how to sell. So what, what role do you play now? Well, I just become 
You take it easy. Them, <laughs> take it easy, man. <laughs> planning and then ask them to complete the mission. That's all. I trusted them, my team. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, we are the one who do all the works now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm more easy now. <laughs> now, now you also mentioned that you no, know, the part of your growth plans is mm-hmm. also to involve which got more entrepreneurs. That's right. right? Tell me more about this. Right um, now, for motorcycle dealers, most of, most of the time they are controlled by uh, um, you know families. Mm-hmm. You know, so for Raymond, uh, he has inherited the dealership you know from his father. So right now we are, uh, and, and most of the dealership are actually close to the public now. So what so, do you mean by that? Uh, so if for instance, if I am uh, uh, Ducati, mm-hmm. uh, Ducati doesn't go around giving out more dealerships. Is mm-hmm. that what you mean? Yeah. So there is actually a precondition if you want to have the dealership here. So, so through um, Raymond's uh, um, dealerships, it's easier because why we have already established the relationship with the manufacturers. Mm-hmm. And what happened is that we, uh, as the uh, market here are more segmentized to the Malays, uh, we're actually now going into uh, Malay's entrepreneur program, uh, you know, to encourage them, you know, would you want to be partner, be part of us, you know, to run a motorcycle showroom together, mm-hmm. which is profitable, sustainable, as well as uh, what they call that, uh, uh, in uh, is uh, uh, solid as well. Okay, you know, so you and you provide already in the sense you provide the infrastructure. Correct. You pr- you bring the kind of expertise that you have yep. over the thirty years that you've been yeah, working in the right. industry <laughs> in to right. to them. Okay, yeah, we provide the business manual, the uh, standard operating procedure. So right from the day uh, when you came to the shop, you open the shop. You know, you start up. So how many again. people are you entertaining who are these, these potential entrepreneurs? How many people are you talking to now so that you can continue to grow? Uh, at the moment, we're in the process. We, uh-huh. are, you know, we, are, we are open to many aspiring entrepreneurs who would like to participate in this program, even investors as well. So we are open our doors. You know, if they are interested, they can actually uh, discuss with us. And uh, we are talking to as many as we can at the moment. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you have 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 new outlets. In terms of online, you have talked about how you are using online social media to market yourself. Mm-hmm. Are you going into e-commerce? Yes, we we in fact we already started our e-commerce platform, where our customers who already bought bikes from us, they can actually go to our website and purchase the accessories to accessorize their bikes from mm-hmm. us, with a. Uh, what we call that um, lower than the retail price kind of a thing. Okay. Yeah. And my understanding also is that this is uh, that in purchasing bikes mm-hmm. in time to come, mm-hmm. I don't know whether you've set it up yet, mm-hmm. but I heard you kind of talk about that, mm-hmm. that you are going to set it up in such a way that people can even make payment online when they buy a motorbike from you. Yes, that's right. Uh, that is possible here. In fact, uh, when people would like to purchase a bike as a whole, you know, they can just pay us uh, in advance. We will prepare the bike. Um, sign the document, get ready done, and they send. Then you ship it out to we them. We ship it up to them, and they, and so really, you don't have to meet them face nope. to face at all. We have done <laughs> it so many times. Really, yeah. really, uh, mostly outstations. Uh huh. Yeah. So what's the future? What's the future? Yeah. Be so beyond growing mm. more outlets. So you no, know, you said you have this. You have been in business for two two years plus, right? Yeah. And your your revenue is you said about how much? I have a dreams, by Believe it, it will be hits 1B. 1B? When? Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe 5 years, maybe 10 years, but I believe it will be done. <laughs> well, gentlemen, it's been really a lot of fun talking to the two of you. Yeah, pleasure. Yeah. Take care. Okay, Raymond Pua, Tian Xiong, owner of Easy One Bikers, and Elvin Lai, his general manager, also there. Nothing stays the same. Traditional one-owner motorbike shops are transforming and growing using different business models. This is Resource Centre on Enterprise and I'm Lim Sun Hing, BFM 89.9, The Business Station. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my or find us on iTunes. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.